Well, hello everyone. <clears throat> My name is Dar Rath, and I'm the pastor at Faith Lutheran Church in Port Elgin, Ontario, Canada. And each week I bring you a story, an essay written by amazing authors. Um, sometimes the stories are funny and sometimes they give us something to think about. Now today's uh, story is actually from a book called Beyond Surviving by a man by the name of David McGinley. And David McGinley is a chaplain at QE2 Hospital in Halifax, and he is a cancer survivor. I highly recommend this book. I have met uh, David in person, and he's quite a remarkable man. So I'm just doing an, a sort of an abridged story and reading a couple of uh, paragraphs from his book so that you can have a sense of his writing. So this page, he's talking to his uh, surgeon, and the surgeon has told him that he has cancer. Suddenly, things had become a lot more serious than I ever anticipated. Anyone who has received a cancer diagnosis knows the delay that occurs between hearing the doctor say the words and you comprehending them. It's called cognitive dissonance. The mental stress experienced when you, your reality is shattered by another one, such as, I'm healthy and will live to a ripe old age, compared to, I have cancer and could die. A circuit breaker flips in your mind. This is actually a form of shock marked by dizziness, dread, guilt, anger, embarrassment, or anxiety. But the most common response is to tune out. You can't hear anything, can't understand. Even the conversation you're currently having turns into a kind of a background hum, a numbing, murky fog through which you continue smiling, nodding, acting as if you're all there when you're anything but. This new reality is incompatible with yours, so one of them will have to be rejected for a while, giving you time to adjust, to grieve. Wail and kick and scream and cram in a midlife crisis or some really intense retail therapy. Do any instantaneous life review, then go on a binge because it really wasn't anything you thought it could be. This is what I wanted to do, condense a lifetime into what I had left. I knew I had a tumor, but being 17 and suddenly stunned, I did not realize what that implied, and I did not want to know. Nor could I imagine how this experience would change my life. Yet in only a few days, a new perspective emerged, an engagement with life that led me out of timidity and thrust me into mindful awareness of how precious and fleeting each moment is. I didn't want to miss any more of them because of, of meekness. In fact, I developed a motto, a creed of sorts, live fast, love hard, leave clean underwear. It was not an excuse for recklessness. Rather, it was a philosophy of take risks, experience life with appreciation and gratitude, and don't leave a mess behind you when you leave. It was the perfect expression of a teenage mind, but it never led me to do anything risky or disrespectful. I simply wanted to dive in and become the hero of my own life, however brief that life may be. Now I'm going to go on to uh, chapter seven. He has some exceptional words here of advice for us. Relationships are the fabric of our souls, the only clothes that we wear to heaven, and they are always torn and tattered. Nobody leaves here completely clean. There are those ends, unfinished conversations, broken bits of hope locked in the heart. 
waiting for forgiveness. This is where true healing is waiting, for to forgive another is to set yourself free from pain that has smothered joy, life, and connection. I always thought cancer would wake people up to this central work of the soul, but we are a stubborn and confused species, unaware of how we cling to pain as a part of our own identity, unaware of the power of forgiveness to heal the heart. This is not a matter of starting the day with meditation, yoga, and hemp oil while saying the rosary and dropping some coins into the panhandler's cup on the way to work. This is a matter of digging into the shadow lands of the soul, unearthing the ugly, the broken, the parts of us that fight to remain unknown. I had the wonderful opportunity and the honor to meet Dr. Kubler-Ross, and she said, that we need to take care of business. She was the founder of the whole field of palliative care. And her words to us in a workshop that I attended was take care of business. And what she meant by that is if we have a disagreement or have a ruffle with anyone during the day that we need to fix it right away. If there's somebody in the family that we've had an argument with or had disagreement with, we're to phone them up, to call them, to get together and to fix it right away. That was her suggestion to us. Don't carry a grudge and learn how to forgive. This is a wonderful book, Beyond Surviving by David McGinley. I highly recommend it. So thanks for taking five and blessings on your day.